Good morning. I'm here with uh, Austin painter Nayeli Gomez, and she will be participating in our upcoming show, Pandemic and Resistance. Um, welcome, Nayeli. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. Of course. So, um, I found uh, a really wonderful little video that you did with Arts and Context, I think back in February. Um, and uh, yeah. Yes. Um, anyway, in that in that video, you talked about um, uh, becoming a painter after you had your son, which I thought was so interesting and wonderful. And I was wondering how um, becoming a parent, becoming a mother, is a driving force behind your art and your creativity. And what are some of the other driving forces behind your art? Uh, my family, um, my hometown. Uh, I come from a family of artists. Everyone's a musician. Everyone's uh, <laughs> they draw, they they paint uh, from generations. So I guess it's just in my DNA, and I had to do it. You know, we're constantly doing things and visually learning from others, and just yeah, we just wanted to figure that out. Awesome. So, um, how did you how did you learn to draw and paint? Was it within your artist family, did you also um, receive that from school or just from life experience? What was your artist's education like? Um, so I'm a graphic designer, um, trained graphic designer. I went to graphic design school and I had a specialty in illustration, uh, but as uh, far back, um, uh, and I don't remember a day on my child, a ch childhood where I didn't have a pen with me or a mm -hmm. colors or paper. I was always making art. Like that's been always a constant. Uh, more than my sisters. My sister's a piano player and she didn't draw as much or my other sisters would do something else. But I was always drawing and color and form was always intriguing me. I like to observe things in detail always uh, I notice things in my surroundings that people won't notice um, I point at them I'm a ho horrible driver because I'm always looking at <laughs> other stuff you know I should be focusing on one thing but um, so yes and then I got a master's degree in fine arts and that's when I got my first uh, painting lesson there. Um, it was really frustrating. I didn't pick up painting at that point. But uh, the seed was there, you know, it's a seed that you just let grow and then it sprouted and I'm here now. Yeah, so it wasn't something you loved when you first encountered it, but something over time that you, a medium you... I love painting and I love art. So every when I went to Spain, I just I think I every day I spent in Madrid, I went to the Prado Museum, you know, <laughs> to look at paintings. Uh, when I lived in New York, I used to go to the to any museum instead of paintings. Like, I, I just love it and I wanted to know how much it takes to do it, how challenging it is. I love challenge and I really wanted to, to get into that. Um, it's difficult and I love it for that reason. Um, you know, it's always, it keeps you mm -hmm. trying harder and harder and harder. There's ne you never reach a point where you're uh, happy, um, completely happy or satisfied. You're always pushing yourself and, and uh, what you imagine is never what, what you painted. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> you, yeah. you always- That is so true. <laughs> Yes, you're always trying to reach that perfection and, and I really like it, so, yeah. Yes, I, I can really see that in the level of detail in each of your paintings. Yes, I have I got to go to the Prado once and it, it's a beautiful museum. Um, right, and, you can spend hours in one painting okay. just looking at one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's so big. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, now, speaking of going to museums, um, what is, what is one or a few artists who you really admire? Oh man, um, <laughs> I like Goya a lot. And especially the dark period of Goya when he was mad and, you know, he was free to paint all of these 
crazy scenes and even the trace on his drawings changed. Um, I, I just love that. Um, I love all painters, the classics. I, um, man, I, there's so many, I, I cannot tell you now. <laughs> In Instagram, I follow like thousands and um, there's so many good painters in New York right now, contemporary painters. There's this boom that uh, there, there's way too many, but uh, right now like Goya is something that I really look at the colors and the themes and yeah. Yeah, yeah Goya was wonderful and very unique painter too yeah. this time, yeah. Um, now, um, what draws you to oil painting in particular, if anything, as a, as a medium. I like to take my time and I think that um, acrylic dry too quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't like the feeling when you're applying them. I really like the oil, like um, it's a very kinetic uh, experience mm -hmm. when you're sliding your brush on the canvas. I love the texture. And to me, I think you reach a different depth um, in the end that I have not seen with acrylics yet. At least for the style of uh, painting I do. I, um, maybe if I did something more contemporary, more modern, acrylics would work, but I just love the feeling of the paint and the smell of the mediums. And it's a whole experience. It's just not the one thing, you know? Too yeah. many senses involved. It does actually kind of smell good, which is such a funny, I've always thought that was a funny thing about oil paint because, well, it's toxic, but it, it kind of, it's a nice, it's this nice sensory experience. <laughs> and there's a bit, not, not yet, there's better mediums now, like more uh, technology and science mm -hmm. has been nicer to, um, they're less toxic. There's this yeah. lavender oil that I use. Um, it's just fantastic. <laughs> I just <laughs> love it. I mean, you still have to open the windows, but mm -hmm. I don't think it's as bad as other other mediums. Yes. So, now your work is is about food and your home and family through these primarily these fruits and vegetables that you paint. Um, I was wondering why how you chose to render your subjects in this particular way, where that's almost like portraiture. At least to me, maybe that's why I've stepped onto it. Um, but they're so individual and interesting. Whereas normally we think of painting fruits, vegetables, and flowers almost like a still life, but these are very singular and personal, even as they're related to food. Yeah. Yes. Um, as I said before, I like to observe in detail. Um, anything and when I go to the supermarket or the farmer's market I just grab these things and I love looking at them really closely mm -hmm. and uh, the, the lemon that's a lemon right not a lime a lemon um, has all of these tiny little dots and that you can feel them you can touch them and I just like to stare at them and you're in your kitchen and you don't really you know, you just chop them, you, you toss them out, you use them, all of these things, and you don't realize how beautiful they are. Nature is gorgeous. Uh, so when I paint this way, it's, I don't like any distractions. A friend of mine was telling me like, ah, you should uh, cut them in half and show how the seeds are. It's like, and I'm like, oh, this is not a, botanic, uh, a botanical <laughs> class or anything. I, I, I mean, they're beautiful inside too, but I just love the way they look in the outside, they're gorgeous, the colors and the, especially the texture when you, when you feel them. Um, I like to show that to people. I think when you go to buy food or anything, you don't pay much attention. But if I show it to you in this big size, then, oh, it has, um, has little dots or the, the layers of a, of a garlic are beautiful transparencies, um, you know, the, the light that goes across is gorgeous. So I like to I like to show that. Is what um, I see. Yeah. Um, no, but when when you are painting, in addition to observing the close visual um, details of each of each fruit and vegetable, do you also think about um, like the original context you encountered them in? 
um, yes, how hard. hard. Yeah. Well, um, the place I find them, they're very, uh, they're no special at all. Like ATV has nothing special <laughs> in it. But like, yeah. when I painted the garlic, I went on a search of the perfect garlic. Uh, I went to every single possible store in Austin, and I have a big, massive bunch of garlic. <laughs> Uh, until I found the perfect one that had the roots still there. Um, so you realize how much uh, manipulation the food has when it gets to your to your kitchen because they chop the leaves, they chop the roots. It's really hard to find something like pomegranates uh, don't have the flower on top, the little um, yellow dots. It was really hard to find that one too for me. Um, the radish was a very fun experience that... Uh, when I painted the radish, I found it in the farmer's market and I realized when I came to my house and I took it out, that thing was gorgeous. The leaves were untouched, they were not broken, uh, which is very rare. So I had to paint it right away. Like I had to take like, tons of pictures of it. Uh, also, I think I'm trying to grow food here in my garden, um, an edible garden, and it's so hard. And yes, when I paint, I just keep thinking, we think this is easy and, and almost worthless, you know, a little bag of uh, radish. But um, growing food is so hard and, and all of the work that comes and where they're coming from, some of them are come from Mexico, the limes or other stuff. So yes, those things have a story there. Uh, there's a lot behind it. Um, and everything, yes, keeps bringing me back home also. Yes, so... Your work is, it's, the composition simple, but it has all these themes to you. And I would imagine people see many different things when they look at it. Have you ever, have you ever had a reaction to your work that has surprised you? Uh, yes, but it was not through, through food. It was uh, these hands here that I mm. have, the flowers that I have not delivered because of COVID, but I saw that painting a while ago. And um, this beautiful woman came and she started to cry when she saw them because she said she knew those hands uh, and she wanted to have it. And it was very moving because uh, I don't know the story behind those hands. She couldn't even speak to tell me, but I just thought this, this picture belongs to her. <laughs> That's hers. Um, regarding fruit and vegetables, I remember some chefs like it. Um, some people feel like uh, like pomegranate has a lot of uh, symbolic uh, connotations and, and someone that had a connection with that bought the pomegranate. And um, yes, I guess fruits and vegetables and, and all of these things sometimes mean something to someone. Um, each one has a story. It, every person has a story, you know, and you, you never know. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, could you talk a little bit about the piece that you're creating for this upcoming exhibition? Yeah. I am working on a, it's not back there, no. Um, so I'm trying to work on a series of uh, women. And it's not oil painting this time. Uh, so um, it's very basic because I have little time. I have a ton of work. And uh, it's my experience as a woman in the house. You know, my husband works, I work. And um, all, of, all of the extra things that we need to do to stay creative. So I'm trying to express that I'm doing so many tasks right now that I'm working full time here. I have to take care of the kids. I have to do so much work that uh, they don't realize, you know, your partner might not realize that they're doing less and how much women are expected to do is the expectations that society have about us. And, um, it's unspoken, they just assume that you have to do all of these things. And, and that gives me little time to create, that gives me little time to, to um, have time for myself. It's, it's difficult, so I'm trying to express that, the feeling of <laughs> wanting to do so much and not being able to. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I think many of us, and many of us women can really connect to that, uh, 
feeling even, I mean, even those of us who are not also parents, you're, you really are expected to multitask and that's not really, exactly. you know, is a difficult thing to say this, oh, well, why, why aren't you just doing that automatically? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. And then even the artwork is, a, is another, it's one of the many tasks. Yes. So that's what I'm working on. <laughs> yeah. Now, how, how are you choosing to express that feeling um, through art? This is my only, the only outlet I, I know, you know, everything I have felt through my pregnancy, through moving to a different country, um, having a kid and being alone, all of that has been gone through my paintings. Um, even if it's fruit and vegetables, the colors or the feeling surrounding it, um, there's always an expression of my feeling at the moment. When I painted my garlic, uh, the background is really, really dark and it has really dark um, shadows and very high contrast. So it almost feels um, it feels in a way almost sad, um, you know, and, and, and I'm saying that because the next painting I did when I felt like almost liberated, my kid was older, he was going to school, I was having more time to paint, I was working more, um, I was feeling a lot better with myself. I painted the radish. Those are my two contrasts on, on like on a range of feelings. Um, if you put them together and the, and the radish is floating, it's bright, it has motion, you know, the leaves are alive. Um, the garlic is, you know, it's a root that's been ripped off the ground and it's just sitting there. And the garlic um, is, the, the, uh, the radish is flying. It's, um, it has a really nice, eerie, feeling around it of uh, freedom and space and openness um, so I'm always constantly I have to put it on a canvas anything I feel has to go there that's my way to get things out yes I really like those two contrasts you did you drew between those two paintings because that is that is evident when you when you look at them my, my question is why did you choose um, theme of women being home and multitasking as a theme um, of pandemic and resistance because it's a theme in life but I think it also is a particular um, moment in time where those um, inequalities are becoming more evident. Because I think we are all feeling it you know it's uh, if you see something like this like oh I'm not the only one. Uh, this is happening at home. It's like a mac microcosmos, and perhaps even men are feeling it somewhere. Else. I don't know. Um, I uh, my work is always very feminine because this is my experience, and and, and uh, my work is very very personal. It's very intimate. So um, this is what I'm feeling the way I am experiencing uh, it right now. Yes. Yes, like, um, and on to the, the second part of the, the title is resistance. Um, another big thing that we're all experiencing to some degree uh, right now. And so I was wondering what uh, you think about uh, that um, the role of artists is in any kind of uh, resistance or in times of, of social and political strife? I think art, artists uh, are very, very important to show, to highlight what's wrong. It's uh, the, when you put everything in art, you show to society what's wrong in a different way. You know, you reflect it in a different way. Um, speak out is very important. We have always been vocal. We have we are complainers, we are never satisfied. We say what's wrong um, and, and that's very, very important. We have to keep doing it. We have to, to keep making pressure. Uh, you know that making art is, is invaluable. Um, just political cartoonists, my God, those guys are so incredible. The level of, uh, um, how do you say this? Um, 
they, the way they absorb all of this information around you and they put it in a cartoon and show it to you, I guess that's uh, with words. Yeah, um, it's insight. fantastic. Yes, so we need to keep making art and, and complaining and complaining and, and, and asking for things to change because uh, racism is not okay. Being a Nazi, a fascist is not okay. And we have to say it and we have to show it, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that there is certainly a reason that all historical fascist movements have targeted art and artists. Um, oh yeah, right away, yes. Often the first, yes. They try um, to get rid of them immediately, yes. Whether, yes, whether it's defunding the arts or much more overt things, but I think it means that we we have to keep making right. it, yes, um, right, correct, yes, with anything we have around us, you know. Um. Yes, um, so my, my final question, I'll, I don't know, things, I won't pretend to be too positive because things are not particularly positive right now, but I do, I want to ask what tactics you use to, you know, continue being motivated, just in general, and motivated to create art um, during this time? Um, I try to focus not much on what I read on social media, because that can be also irrealistic. I don't think that people are that bad. I think you just are believed to. I, you know, Hillary didn't Hillary won the, the popular vote and and uh, and uh, the guy is a monster and I really don't believe everyone is like that. Um, I'm currently working in voter registration and with uh, I have met uh, incredibly smart, good people that are trying to make a big change. And I see the new generations, you know, young kids, young kids like you or even younger, they have a whole different uh, way of thinking. Uh, they're going to fix it. I just believe this old generation has these really crazy <laughs> ideas of how the, this small, tiny vision of how the world should work. Uh, but I really think there's good people out there and um, we just don't let yourself be taken by this wave of excessive information online and just be smart and, and pick. Yeah. And, and yes, I try to do that and it works, I guess. <laughs> and then I make art and if I feel too stressed, I put it on a paper. And um, yeah. I'm a positivist, I guess. Um. <laughs> it's a good way to be. Yeah, that, was, that was very well said. Thank you. And also, I mean, it's wonderful to hear that you are helping people get registered to vote. Thank you. That's a really, yeah. really important cause. I think there's more awareness now, but I think still, still not enough. So, yeah, the pandemic has been rough. Um. <laughs> So we need to just be conscious and conscious, conscious. And yeah. Anyway, well, thank you so much for sharing your art and your story with me today. I really enjoyed talking with you and learning. Yeah. Anyway. Likewise. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. All right. Hope you have a good day. All right. You too. Have a good weekend. You too. All right. Let me get back to to painting or relax <laughs> <laughs> to my coffee <laughs> all right cheers, cheers. all right bye bye